Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really awesome little accessory for the Raspberry Pi 400. And I was doing some searching online for a screen for the Pi 400. And it's true that in the past I've actually done a video on just using a portable monitor with this. But I was looking for something that would attach to the Pi 400. And I came across this. This is known as the Vilross Pi Dock 400. Basically what this does is adds a trackpad, kind of a case, and the 13.3 inch IPS 1080p monitor to your Raspberry Pi 400. So I do want to mention that this is a bit expensive for what you're getting. I thought there would be more to it, but by the end of this video you'll get an idea if this is worth it or not to you for your use case scenario. But let's go ahead and get it out of the box. So first things first, we do get a pretty nice little carrying case. This is fully padded and you can place everything inside of here, even the power supply that comes along with the Pi Dock 400. So it'll be really easy to carry this whole thing along with you when you're on the go. Next thing in the box is the Pi Dock 400 itself and we'll take a look at this in a second. But we also get a few accessories. We have our 12 volt power supply. This is 12 volt, 3 amp. We also get a USB Type-C cable for powering up the Raspberry Pi 400 and our HDMI cable. It's mini HDMI to full size HDMI. And here it is, the Pi Dock 400. This is constructed of plastic. I was really hoping that would be a little higher quality, but uh, if we take a look at the bottom here, we do have plenty of ventilation. Looks like there's a spot we could add a fan later on down the road. Got some rubber feet here to keep it on the desk. And over on the left hand side, our 12 volt power in and a headphone jack. Nothing much else going on around the unit. Let's go ahead and open it up. And when it comes down to it, basically what this adds to your Raspberry Pi 400 is the 13.3 inch IPS 1080p display along with a trackpad. Unfortunately, I've looked around this thing. We don't have built-in speakers. We don't have built-in power. And I was really hoping for at least built-in speakers with this unit. But either way, it's here. Let's go ahead and hook it up. We do have that HDMI cable and that USB Type-C cable we need to plug into the Raspberry Pi 400. And real quick, if you're not familiar with the Raspberry Pi 400, basically what we have here is a Raspberry Pi 4 shoved inside of a keyboard. It is a different PCB in here, but we have our USB, HDMI, Ethernet, and GPIO around back. So in order to get this connected to the Pi 400, we're going to go ahead and plug in that HDMI cable. It's a shorter HDMI cable, micro on one side, full size on the other. And when it comes to power, we'll be utilizing the included USB Type-C cable. And they just plug in right here. We also have an extra USB cable and that's for the trackpad. So all that's really left to do here is just connect everything up to the Raspberry Pi 400. And around back you can see we have our HDMI plugged in, USB Type-C for power, and that trackpad USB. We still have our free Ethernet, we can get access to the GPIO, and we can still access those two extra USB 3.0 ports on the Pi 400. And once we have that in place, as you can see, it fits in here really nicely. But unfortunately, there's really no way to kind of latch this in here. On the dock itself, there are some magnets built in. So I guess you could add magnets to the bottom of the Pi 400 to get it to connect in here really nicely. But to have a little clip system would have been really awesome. Now it's time to boot this thing up. On that included power supply, there is a little switch. And the Raspberry Pi and the screen are going to be powered from that 12 volt power supply that comes with the unit. By the way, I'm using a fully updated version of Raspberry Pi OS on the Pi 400 and it's running from a micro SD card. We don't need to install any drivers because we're just running that monitor over HDMI and the trackpad that's built into the Pi dock is running over USB. So it should work just like any monitor and any trackpad or mouse you plug into your Raspberry Pi. And speaking of the trackpad, it does work. I mean, touch is really nice, but it's a bit loud. I mean, it does feel a little clunky for what you're getting here. And it would have been nice if this was a much larger trackpad, because when you're looking at laptops, even cheaper ones nowadays, this is definitely on the smaller side of things. So the first thing I wanted to test was whether there were speakers in here or not. I did look through the little vents on the bottom. I didn't see anything, but you know, you never know. It could have been shoved up inside of the corner here. Unfortunately, there's no sound built into the Pi Dock 400. So even though we have a trackpad and a screen built in, you're still going to have to add a set of speakers or headphones. I'm going to go with just a single speaker setup because I did want to test a little bit of emulation here. But one thing I can say is this screen does look really, really good. It was actually surprising to see that they added a really nice panel to this unit here. It's a 13.3 inch IPS 60 hertz 1080p. Viewing angles are great, and that's one of the best things it's got going for it right now. 
So going into this, I knew it didn't have a battery built in, but I was really counting on it having speakers. It wasn't something that I researched before I picked this up. I just figured, hey, it's probably got speakers in it. It does have that headphone jack over here on the side, but I really think they should have added at least some smaller one watt speakers to this unit. And to make it more appealing, adding a battery wouldn't have been a bad idea. A 4,000 or a 5,000 milliamp hour battery built into this unit would have made a lot more people want to get a hold of one of these. I definitely wanted to test that audio jack before I went into any emulation. I just wanted to make sure it worked and see how it worked. It actually does work over HDMI, so you should be good to go. There's no drivers or anything. You'll just plug your headphones in or speaker and you'll get sound. But then we have an extra wire hanging off of this thing. And in turn, using a powered speaker like this, this also has to be plugged into the wall. So you know I was going to test some emulation on this, and it's going to work out just as well as the Raspberry Pi 400 can run emulation. Like I mentioned, this one's overclocked to 2GHz, so it does do a great job, even with PSP and N64. Now when it comes to PSP and N64, there's still some games that are going to lag, but emulation on these devices has definitely come a long way. What we have on screen right now is PS1 using RetroArch with a PC SX Rearm Core, Crash Bandicoot 2, not a super hard game to run, but it runs at full speed on this little device, and it looks really good with this screen. So with some Mega Drive slash Genesis and PS1 out of the way, let's take it up a bit to Dreamcast. Now with this one, I'm using the standalone version of ReDream. We're at the native resolution, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and with that overclock on the Pi 400, Dreamcast on the Raspberry Pi 4, or in this case the Pi 400, does work out really, really well. Now one of the main reasons I wanted to test a little bit of emulation was just to check out if there was any kind of screen tearing or anything like that going on. And even though we're running over HDMI, I just wanted to make sure that the converter board that they're using in here was decent, and I haven't noticed any screen tearing whatsoever, so it's looking pretty good. I got one more to test here, I just went with some PSP, we're using the standalone version of PPSSPP. This is Soul Calibur Broken Destiny, we're at 2x resolution using the OpenGL backend. And with the easier to run PSP games, they work phenomenally on the Raspberry Pi 4 or the Pi 400. So when it comes to using the built-in trackpad, it actually works a lot better than I thought it would. I do wish it was much bigger because I personally find myself always right-clicking when I should left-click because I'm right there in the middle of the trackpad. It's definitely my fault, but I do wish it was a bit bigger so we had more room to work with here. But overall, I mean, it does work really well, especially with web browsing. It does have gestures built in. You can do two-finger tap, one-finger tap. We can scroll with it. I mean, it works just like any other laptop trackpad would. And remember, this is powered over USB, or it's connected to the Pi 400 over a single USB cable. So I got it plugged into the USB 2.0 port. What would have made this thing a hundred times better is a built-in battery, and I could have definitely lived without any built-in sound if we had that battery. And there are ways to make this fully portable. What I have here is a little cable I built a while ago for another project, and a 12-volt power supply. This is actually a 6,000 milliamp hour 12-volt power supply. It's not PD or quick charge or anything like that. It just puts out straight 12 volts, 3 amps, and I'm running this over USB to a 2.5 barrel jack that'll fit right in the side of this. And since the Pi Dock 400 runs on 12 volts, that's exactly what you're going to need. But this should boot up in just a second. And now, instead of using wall power, I can actually take this with me since I have that power supply. But it's got to be a specialized 12 volt power supply. They're actually available on Amazon for pretty cheap. And you won't have to make a cable. They usually come with a cable that'll work out just fine. But having to add more and more to this dock here really doesn't make sense. I mean, you'd be better off just buying a monitor. Now I know this can be easily put inside of the bag and carried around with you, but you're still going to need wall power if you don't have a battery like this. And when it comes to sound, I know it's not going to be a big deal to some people, but it would have been really nice to have at least one 1 watt speaker built into this unit. You can always use your earbuds or headphones with that 3.5mm headphone jack on the side, but I really do think that this should have come with sound built in. So overall, it does have a nice screen. I do like the form factor. The fact that we can just throw a Raspberry Pi 400 in here is pretty cool. It would have been nice to have a locking system to hold this in so when you turn it over it doesn't kind of bash up against that screen while you're carrying it around in the included carrying case. And to be fair, in their marketing material and over on their website, they never claim that this was a laptop. It definitely looks like one and would give somebody the impression that this thing's fully portable. But after all, they are calling it a dock and when it comes to a docking station, that's usually stationary on your desk. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. I really had high hopes for this. I'm a big fan of the Pi 400, but I think I'm just going to be sticking to a portable monitor and a mouse and keyboard. If you're still interested in learning more about this or maybe even picking one up, I will leave a few links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.